Welcome to week four, and today we're gonna to be discussing all the different flying techniques and tips that I use to make awesome drone content. So we're here at Port Braddon on the Causeway Coast. It's a little bit windy, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down low, and we're gonna start low and slow and look at the different kinds of shots that should have drawn down low. I mean, I'm, I'm standing here right now and I'm looking down and I can see interesting rock formations off to one side there. I can see rock pools with really interesting colors and textures in them. That slow drone moving over the top, pointing straight down, would really, really pick up. You've got the cliffs here in the right-hand side. They've got interesting textures and they're kind of blocking the view around the sides. Maybe I could like slowly fly around, reveal what's on the other side. I've also got a trail here. Possibly I might want to follow someone walking along that trail. Over there, I've spotted a rock formation with a large crack in it. Potentially, I could fly slowly down through that. And if I look down into the sea, there's just these incredible colors and seaweed as you look down off these low cliffs. So maybe I can fly over the edge and look down. But before I fly, I need to make sure that the conditions are gonna be good. And to do that, I use a number of apps. I use the Met Office weather app to give me an overall look at what the forecast is going to be. Is there a chance of rain? I also use an app called Dark Sky, which uses like radar tracking to tell me when rain is likely to happen. So I don't set out of my car, go for a walk, and five minutes later, I'm sprinting for cover. Uh, the other thing I want to check as well as rain is what is the wind speed? It is windy today. It's not too windy to fly, but it's windy enough that I might want to go down there and fly a bit lower down, because the higher you go, the windier and the windier it gets. I also might think twice about flying out to see if it's really windy, because if the battery starts to get low and the wind picks up, I might not make it back. Getting then slightly more complicated, there's also an app I use called Windy, and Windy will visualize and show me the direction of the wind. So why is that important? Well, you can see behind me, I've got these cliffs on the right hand side here. If the wind is coming in from the sea, I know it's, it's always gonna be windy here no matter what I do. But if it's coming from inland, I know if I get down low in cliffs, I might be in out of the wind. So it means that those low level shots are gonna be a lot smoother. Another important thing is if the wind is blowing from the sea inland, it means there's less risk about flying out to sea because the drone's gonna get pushed back. And then the final app I'm gonna talk about is one that's called TPE 3D, which in my opinion is an absolutely essential app in any landscape photographer's toolkit. This app allows you to 3D visualize the environment where you're at. You can zoom in on a map and you can like actually rotate around the environment, see it in 3D, but that's not the cool part. The cool part is you can swipe along the bottom and you can change the time of day and it will show you the direction of the sun, where is the light going to hit, and that can let you plan where you're gonna get the best light for your shots, because if I come to a place like this and I have the option, you know what, it'd be really great if I could fly here when the sun is hitting those rocks. Even if it's a clear sunny day, there are only certain times of the day the sun will be there, because it might rise over here and it might set over there, so the time sunset or late afternoon comes around, this could be in shadow. So this app allows you to go through the day and see where that sun will be, so you can start at the absolutely perfect time. So once I've checked the apps, once I'm happy that conditions are good to fly, and also, as a final check, you've got the apps, but the, the, this, this is a good final test. Lick your finger, stick your finger in there, see what the weather's actually like, see if it's actually windy. You've got eyes, have a look around you, even if the apps say it's good to go, use your eyes. It's your responsibility. Have a look around. And if you're 100% happy at that point, you can start to fly. So I'm going to grab my bag, head down there, set up, and go through the more technical aspects of how to fly. And I'll only talk through in real time while I'm flying and tell you what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. So I've come down here. I've got the drone out. I'm using the DJI Mini 2. Great photographs, great videos. And before I take off, I just have to sort of ask myself the question, what is it I'm trying to achieve here? Because while this will fly for upwards of 20 minutes, I need to make sure I use that time wisely. So you don't want to just put the drone in the air and start snapping. You need to have a think about what it is I'm trying to do. And for me, for a location like this, typically it's going to be for a YouTube video where I am trying to show off the environment. I'm trying to inspire people to come out to the outdoors and explore it for themselves. So I'm looking around and thinking what for me is 
detail and I see textures in the rock, I see colored seaweed down there. And then as well as those details, I also want to like blow people away with how cool the environment is. And then I'm looking for what are my hero shots that show off this environment. And for me looking around here, I think just behind me here, you've got these two rock stacks. I'm gonna fly through those. Um, and I might be able to take a few photographs straight down of, of the seaweed and then the water underneath as well. And then of course, with a drone, you wanna get, let's face it, the shots are just you showing off a bit in a cool environment. So I'm gonna climb up to the top of that rock stack um, and I'm gonna get a drone of the drone just flying back to reveal where I am. So before I get started, I'm gonna talk through uh, basic settings for photography and basic settings for video. And then once we get flying, I'll go through the specifics of each as I fly and as I change those settings. Okay, basic settings then. And we're gonna start with photography. Now, the drone is currently in video mode. So this is a good opportunity to show you this little button here, which I press that, that switches between modes. So you can really quickly press that. Video mode, photo mode. And the first thing you'll notice is that when you switch between those modes, the aspect ratio of the image changes on screen. That's because when you're shooting a photograph, it's using the entire sensor. And when you're shooting a video because it has that letterbox format, that's 16 by nine, it's sort of cropping a bit off the top and bottom, just in case you're wondering why that happens. The first thing you probably want to decide is whether or not you're going to shoot in JPEG or RAW format. My advice is to shoot in JPEG and RAW. JPEGs are Pro images that are processed in camera. And if you don't wanna to have to worry about doing any kind of post-production on your photographs, JPEG is fine. But if you think you might wanna learn those advanced techniques and how to get the most from your drone, and that's what this series is about, my advice is to shoot in JPEG and RAW, because then you have those JPEGs if you want them for quick shots, but then you can also go in and shoot the RAWs as well. Now, top tip, little secret that I'm gonna let you into. If you look on my screen down the bottom where it says EV, that's, that's basically your exposure compensation. I have that set to minus, not 0.3. And the reason that I do that is because the sensor on a drone like the Mini is quite small. It has a reduced dynamic range. We discussed this in an earlier video compared with a drone with a larger sensor. But if you underexpose your images slightly, then when you're editing them afterwards, you can actually get more detail out of the image because you can bring up the shadows and that way you've got nicer exposed skies and you've got more detail in the shadows as well. So just a little tip, set it to not minus, not 0.3. I have an option now to shoot in automatic. And to be honest, if the conditions are sort of flat and nice like this, automatic works really well. We've got a mix of sky and land and the conditions are, are, are fine. You'll notice if you point the camera straight down, it tends to overexpose or if I was to just fly, toward, or fly towards that cliff to take a photograph, it would probably overexpose it as well. So that's why you might want to use manual or pro mode as it's called on the Mini 2. Now what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to keep it in pro mode the entire time because while you might end up shooting in auto a lot of the time, you should always be able to shoot manual. You should know what those manual settings do because if you want to maximize what you're going to get out of this tiny drone, you need to know those manual settings. And I'll go into those maybe in a little bit more detail as I fly, but the important ones to start with are, when I tap that, you can see a lot more settings come up on the screen. Um, I've got JNR, that's, that's JPEG and RAW. Next to that, I've got my shutter. Don't worry too much about shutter speed with the drone, but I will say that in general, you want it to be above about 150 or 180. If you go below that, um, you might start to get unwanted blur, motion blur, because a drone, while it is held by GPS and it has stabilization in it, it will shift about very slightly. So you wanna keep that above about 150 to 180. Next, we have the aperture, and that's the size of the opening through which the light goes through. On the Mini, that's fixed, so you can't change that, so we'll not worry about that. And then we've got uh, here it says uh, 4, 3, that is your aspect ratio. Now, I can change that if I want to. If I tap that, it brings up um, this grid here, which actually gives me easier access to these settings. And you can see that if I tap 16 by 9, that crops the top and bottom. So it gives you the same aspect ratio of a video. You don't really want that because it means you're just losing information. Now, if we look on the screen, you'll see WB. That is white balance, and that's really just the warmth 
of the of the colors within the scene and we're shooting outdoors so my advice is to just permanently set that to somewhere around 5,000 so you have an option there it can be automatic I would take that off automatic because you don't want that changing while you're flying I would set that to around 5,500k next that we've got our ISO ISO is sensitivity and that's how sensitive the sensor is to light to make the sensor more sensitive um, the electronics send more electricity more energy to the sensor which increases the sensitivity but also introduces noise or grain so you'll notice that often at night if your images are really grainy and nasty that's because the ISO has been increased sensitivity has gone up and that noise has been introduced so for the best landscape photographs you want to keep that as low as possible so if you can set that manually to 100 you'll notice down in the bottom right there's an mm and that's just what uh, your current exposure settings are relative to what the drone thinks it should be so currently that's telling me it's minus 1.3 ideally you probably want that as close to zero as possible my advice would be to keep that slightly below zero so in those minuses similar to how i was saying if you use an auto you keep it about minus 0.3 so that can be a good guide for if your settings are accurate or not now you will notice when you're flying if you're trying to shoot something like a silhouette this might tell you you're really really underexposed or really overexposed so you always have to have a look at the image and try and decide do i need to pay any attention to that or not but it's there as a guide to help you shift at camera positions now to talk about video settings because my bum was getting sore on these hard rocks so switch yourself we leave that in uh, switch yourself over to video mode now by hitting the button i showed you earlier a lot of similarities here between photographs so we might even get through this even faster but one of the things you'll probably want to decide about videos first of all is what resolution do i need to shoot in and what frame rate do i need to shoot in because currently we've got it set to 4k at 30 frames per second which is sort of the, the highest quality you can get from this drone but if i tap that i can win i can see i've got 1080p i've got 2.7k you might actually want to use one of these other settings if you are editing on a computer which is a bit older or lower power it might actually struggle with 4k if that's the case and maybe you can do a test go over and put it into 1080p and shoot in that mode now when you shoot in 1080p it also gives you the option to go across and shoot up to 60 frames per second we're not really going to get into that in this video but if you did shoot at 60 frames per second you can later slow that down you'll get a little bit of slow motion it's not something i use personally very often for landscapes so i'm not really going to talk about it here 2.7k is kind of splitting the difference between 1080 so 4k is four times the size the resolution the amount of pixels as 1080 and 2.7k is kind of a compromise in the middle but personally i want the highest quality possible so i shoot in 4k and i typically shoot in 4k at 25 frames per second or whatever the frames per second are of the other camera that i'm using so if i was using a gopro for example i want to make sure it was 25 frames per second and my drone was 25 frames per second if the gopro was set to 30 frames per second i would want the drone set to 30 frames per second as well and that's important because if you mix frame rates when you get into editing you can get like weird jitters and things that you don't want to so try and match the frame rates on your cameras so 4k 25 frames per second will give you the best quality once again we can shoot in auto or we can shoot in manual but we're going to use manual settings we're going to be brave one thing you'll notice when you're flying a drone and you're using automatic settings is that they probably suit when you're higher up because when you're higher up you tend to be looking down on a scene and the lighting's very even if we're doing low flying like what i'm going to be doing here when flying around rocks automatic settings will expose a rock correctly and then as you fly around the rock the exposure will change it'll brighten up and that can sometimes look a little bit nasty once again we've got white balance in here it's currently set the automatic i'm going to go in take that off and set that to 5500 so that stays nice and consistent iso once again i want that to be as low as possible so i've set it to 100 can't change the aperture and shutter speed then you want the shutter speed to be at least double the frame rate so that you don't get a weird blur in your images so those are the basic settings that i use for photography and for video and i'm going to go into those in more detail as i get flying to start with i just want to get a really basic shot a photo 
and a video just showing off this here. I really like the way you've got the cliff up to the right, you've got this rock stack here in the left, and then in the background we can see all the way to White Park Bay. So I'm just gonna take off now from my backpack over there. Back of a backpack can be very handy to take off from if you don't have a launch pad. So I looked around, there's no one about, conditions are still good, always keep doing those checks. Let's arm the props. Okay, I've got the drone in the air, and the first thing I'm just gonna do is rotate around here. Look at that. The fact we're just four meters off the ground already, it just is so much, it's just a much nicer perspective. I really like the way you're getting a reflection of the cliff on the right down in the rocks there. Now immediately, what I'm noticing is I'm not getting that rock stack in, so I'm gonna fly backwards a bit. I can try and watch and see what the drone does. And I'm gonna climb a little bit as well. Rotate the drone around, so I can get that rock stack in. And really what I'm trying to get here is I'm trying to get that puddle sort of in the foreground. So I'm just gonna make some subtle movements here until I find a composition I like, while not getting too close to the member of the public. That's a nice clean frame. Now, I need to adjust my exposure because you can see bottom right, we're up to plus 0.7, that's too high. And if I'm honest, phone screens are pretty good these days. They can be a really good indicator of what your exposure is like. I'm looking at the sky, I'm looking at the clouds. There's no detail really in them. They're all blown out. There's lots of nasty, nasty whiteness in there. So I wanna cut down the shutter and that's really the main thing I adjust and start swiping across. Higher numbers is faster, so that's gonna darken it down. And I'm gonna go across until I see that I'm losing that nasty over brightness in the sky. So you can see that now. Now, if you're looking at this as a non-processed image, it looks a bit flat, it looks a bit gray, but you will see the difference once we get into post-production. I'm not gonna take the photograph, so it'll be a little bit too much detail. I take the photograph by taking my finger and pushing the button on the back. Now, typically what I would do is I'd switch over to video mode and I would shoot a video version of this scene. Now, when you shoot in the video mode, it does crop in slightly, so you will find that you need to fly backwards first to get similar framing. So I'm gonna do that now, just keep an eye on the drone, make sure it's not reversing into anything. So let's hit record. And now I'm just gonna push forward on the, on the right stick and fly slowly through the scene. Okay, I've got the shot I wanted. I'm gonna turn the drone around. Oh, actually, I just spotted something interesting. That rock there, I think I'll make a good photograph. So while I'm in the air and while I'm in the area, I just had a little quick look around there and spotted something that looked kind of cool. So I think it might make a good photograph, but I think it'll make a good photograph if I'm closer, but I might as well get video while I'm there. So I check my settings, pretty happy with that. Hit record, fly forward, and basically I'm using I'm using the video shot to set up my shot for the photography. I'm happy with that. Stop recording that. I want to tilt down a little bit. Switch over into photos. I want to get this. So I'm looking for a little bit of foreground interest here and I'm getting that with this little island or this little rock that's poking up in the foreground bonus shot. I do this, this is one of the ways I maximize my battery life on commercial shoots. When I'm shooting both video and photography, you use the video moves to get yourself into position to shoot the photograph. So there's a really nice rock pool over here. I'm just looking for shapes, just things that are interesting. And then I'm trying to use the rotation of the drone to figure out which framing looks the best. quite like that. The way I've got that little inlet is centered and then I've got this like this square of blue up on the right hand side. I've got a little bit of the, the snotty green as well. Use video to get to your photo. So I'm gonna shoot this as a video. I'm gonna come right back down. Swap over to video. Change my exposure to be closer to what it was for the photograph. Drone's drifting a bit there. I'm just gonna correct it. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna start here, hit record, and I'm just gonna fly straight up until I get in the position where I wanna take a photograph. That's a cool shot though. Look at that, we got the blue of the sea, we got the rocks, we got the grass. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna go up a little bit more, we're starting to get the trail in now. This is just a really, really good way to reveal an environment. We've gone for a shot of what looked like just a rocky pool and we've gone up and now we can see grass, we can see trails, we can see sand, gravel there. Just all these textures and colors. Right, I'm up at 85 meters now, it's pretty high. The mini is a dot. Stop recording that. Switch over to photos. That is a class shot. So what I want to do here is find a diagonal in this. So I'm going to use the colors. I'm going to have the sea is going to come diagonally through the shot, and then I'm going to have the land through it as well. Uh, so I'm just going to rotate around and try and find where the best frame would be. Let's put the land above. This bit's highly subjective. I'm just trying to rotate around to see what feels good to me as a photograph. I think I like, yeah, I like the blue. I like the blue at the top. Let's just try and position this so that it's almost coming from one corner of the frame to the other. Okay, the rock is gone. Sorry, Dwayne Johnson. Fly forward a little bit. Okay, so you see that? I tried, I'm trying to get the green and the blue to come perfectly out of the corner take the photograph and it's time to come down and land because my battery is at 20%. Okay, I've landed the drone. Just before I disconnect everything, I'm gonna quickly tap in, have a quick look at some of the shots I got. Yeah. You know that you're happy with the location when you check your shots afterwards and there's a big smile on your face. Yeah, really happy with those shots I've got. There's, there's infinite possibilities here, but I think that's us done at this lower level location and we're gonna go on to the next place now. Behind me is the incredible Murloc Bay, and just out of sight in that direction are the Fairhead Cliffs. And I've come here, because this is where we're gonna get those epic landscape shots. We're gonna fly high, we're gonna reveal this incredible landscape, which, if you're a fan of uh, Game of Thrones, you may recognize as several scenes were actually shot in this exact spot. You might have noticed I've switched over to the DJI Air 2S. The reason for that is this is quite a windy day um, and this just handles wind a bit better than the Mini 2 so it's going to be a little bit more reliable for these kinds of shots but if there was less wind we would have just stuck with the Mini. You'll notice this tree behind me. Now, landscape photographers here love this tree and I want to use it to frame a really nice reveal shot. So my plan is I'm going to start on the other side of the tree and then fly backwards underneath the tree up this hill and then way back into the sky as high as I can go in that direction to reveal the landscape. I also want to do another shot flying in this direction to reveal the cliffs but we'll go down I'll get into a spot where I can get out of view of the drone get set up we'll get the drone in the air and I'll talk through all my settings as I fly as before so let's go. Okay so first of all because I want to reverse backwards through that tree um, I want to practice going through it forwards first, so I'm sort of matching that movement. It's a lot easier rather than going to the other side and just flying backwards and hoping that I don't hit the tree and then I make it onto that branch. This is a good place to set my exposure. I'm going to do this as a video and then I might come back and take a couple of stills. You can see that the exposure is all over the place. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to set my white balance manually as before to apply well, actually, in this case, I'm going to set it to 6,000 Kelvin because I've noticed that specifically the Air 2S tends to have slightly cooler colors than other drones. It's really overexposed, so I'm going to go in here and change my shutter speed. Uh, this is a tricky one just because of the complexity of the scene. You've got the, the, the seas reflecting light and the sky is bright as well. But I think from looking at the sky, probably around one. 12 50th of a second they're going to go that and the exposure meter is telling me that's about evenly exposed looks quite dark on screen but once again i know i can lift that up a little bit when i go to post-production so let's go forward get down low enough if you're here that beeping you're hearing is the obstacle avoidance on this drone which i'm going to keep on for now if it tries to stop me flying through i might switch it off but 
this is where I want to come back. So I'm framing this up. I want to come back through the tree with this approximate frame. I'm going to go slightly lower actually, because you can see when I go lower, I then get that headland in the background that appears and it almost matches the line of the branch of the tree, which is kind of cool. All right, let's try and get the shot. So I'm going to hit record, fly backwards. And as I fly backwards, I need to climb at the same time. I'm in here beside this rock because I want, I don't want to be in the shot. So as the drone comes back, I'm going to come back and duck down in so I won't be in the shot. I'm going to just get my bag out of the way as well. So let's try this, right. Hitting record and starting to fly backwards. Uh, checking the drone, checking the, the screen. Am I clearing the tree as I want? Okay, yeah. Right, I need to start climbing. I'm climbing, I'm climbing, I'm getting in beside the rock. Keeping an eye on the drone because it's reversing in the hill. Higher, 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 higher. Okay, I'm confident I've cleared those trees. Ducking my head down, going backwards. Now that the drone is far enough away, it can't really see me. I'm standing up to make sure I've got the drone still in line of sight as it goes back and up and up and up. And I'm gonna go right as far back as I can. And that's 500 meters. So we're up at 52 meters in altitude. We're climbing, always keep an eye on your altitude. You don't wanna go over 120 meters. We're about 230 meters away now. 250, altitude of 77 meters. 80 meters in altitude. 300 meters away, I can still see it up there in the sky, 90 now, 300 meters. Okay, we're nearly at maximum altitude. So I'm gonna hold about, yeah, that's gonna be maximum altitude for this. And I'm gonna keep going back until we hit 500 meters, half a kilometer away. And there we go, I've got my reveal shot of Murloc Bay. I'm gonna hit stop recording, switch over to photo mode now, and snap a couple of stills while I'm up there from quite a distance away. I've tapped into my pro settings, my manual settings, and I'm gonna manually set the exposure for my stills. See, it's way too bright, can't see anything. Darken that down until I'm happy with the detail in the sky. Now, while I'm up there, I've got a really good view of the Fairhead Cliffs. So this is an opportunity for me to get a video reversing backwards in this direction. I'll just turn around and fly straight back. I'm gonna switch into video mode. The higher you are, the slower it seems that you're moving. Uh, compared to when you're really, really low. So you do need, you can see that I'm operating the control sticks and pulling back much, much further than I was earlier when I was flying down lower. So that's about 60 seconds and I'm gonna stop recording. One thing I like to do is to shoot shots. Don't shoot your entire flight because um, you're just gonna eat up your memory card. So it's find a shot, plan the shot, shoot the shot. And then when you come to the edit, you're not going through like a 10 minute shot trying to chop it up. Um, it's a bit more organized than that. Let's just have a look around while I'm up there. I can still just about see it. It's important to always have eyes on where your drone is in the sky because then you know if anything is flying around it. I think I'm going to fly it back down to where we are now. Okay, I'm almost in position. The eagle-eyed among you might have spotted me and the cameraman, but for the sake of being able to keep eyes on the drone, I think we'll just we'll just stay here for now. And you can pretend we're not here. So I quite like this shot here. I've got this large boulder on the left coming through, and I'm going to fly through that and capture video but first of all I want to capture still so I'm going to switch over to stills frame it up I've got the tree nice on the right hand side there I'm gonna gain a little bit of altitude just so it frames better with the with the sea in the background there we go I like that because you see where the tops of the tree were kind of been absorbed by those rocks that separation is better because it means visually the eye is able to detect that those are two different objects quite happy with that Capture that shot, switch back over to video mode. And this time I'm gonna try a slightly complex shot. What I wanna do is I wanna fly down over the top of the rocks, curve around the side of the tree, go right down to the shoreline down there and just fly along the shore. Gonna hit record, happy with the settings, and let's go. So I'm coming down towards the tree moving my left stick right to try and keep the tree in frame. I want to try and get in that gap between the tree and the rocks. I think that'll look cool. Nice and low, 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 low. Down through, keep an eye on the drone. What's the drone doing? Okay, don't near anything. Down through, right on past. There we go, just skimming the top of the grass there. And I'm gonna sweep on down to the shoreline. So I'm curving around over these rocks. And then you see that gap up ahead, I've spotted that V in the rocks. 
had a look at it earlier from up here and wondered if it'd be good. So I'm gonna try and turn, 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 nice, smoothly and slowly. You don't wanna do jerky movements. Still keeping low because I'm building up to that big reveal of the headland from high up. So I've got that lined up in the middle there. You can see sort of that V shape. So I'm gonna go further down, having a look there. I'm at 450 meters, so I should start climbing soon, otherwise I'm gonna run out of, run out of space. Over the top, and I think I will climb as soon as I hit this second rock here. Okay, and let's start climbing. Up, 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 up. Okay, I'm going to actually abort this shot and come back because I've noticed my battery is now at 25% and I'm about as far away as I want to fly. So I'm going to bring it back and swap batteries before doing anything else. Quite importantly, I flew in the direction that the wind was coming from. So now the wind is helping to carry the drone back, which is essential when you're doing a shot like this where you're flying out over the sea um, and you're heading towards the end of the battery. So you can see I'm still at 23%. I've got loads of battery to get back home. But this is just a case of when you get the battery warning, turn and go back it's just not worth losing the drone so bring it back and land it okay i think i'm happy with that shot and while i'm out there i've got one last shot that i do quite a lot i want to do which is flying low and then climbing up over a hill and then revealing the view on the other side it's just a more interesting shot than just getting high and flying flying along so i'm going to turn around there's my friend the tree and um, you can see us we have a wave I'm gonna get the drone a little bit lower here. I'm gonna fly up over the rocks and reveal the magnificent fair head cliffs in the background. So let's get myself lined up here. I'm gonna tilt the camera up a bit. So I gotta do a couple of things. As I go up, I'm gonna to have to adjust the wheel to tilt the camera down. So I'm looking up because I'm flying up. And um, what's my exposure like here? It's a little bit bright. I think the sky's looking a bit nasty. So I'm gonna dim that down. Yeah, one over 1,000, rest sense, happy with that. I'll go a little bit, yeah, I think I'll go a little bit lower. That's a nice spot there, okay, yeah. Hit record and I'm ready to go, here we go. So I'm keeping it really, really slow to start with. And then I'm gonna kind of follow the shape of the hill. Gotta start climbing, climb, climb, climb. As I'm climbing, I'm adding speed. Going faster and faster, adding the altitude, so it's gonna come right up over the top, nice and close to these rocks, this will look good. I'm very happy with that. The rain is finally starting, so I could do so much more here, so many different types of movements, um, but I, I find so much with the drone, once you learn those basic controls and those basic ways of flying, it's just about combining them, looking at the landscape, seeing what movements can I make through the landscape, what can I frame up, what looks good, um, and just, experiment and have fun and get those shots that are really really going to show off every location individually but i'm going to land before the rain comes on any heavier absolutely incredible place to fly but as you can see it's also incredibly windy so that is us down and clear we have landed we're not going to fly anymore today my three takeaway tips from today for getting amazing photos and doing filmmaking with drones are plan Check the weather forecast. We knew it was gonna get worse today. That's why we came down here earlier. When you get to the environment, explore, have a look around, see uh, what kind of shots might suit the environment. Not every shot will suit every environment. Some places will shoot flying really high and fast. Some environments are gonna suit you getting down low, concentrating on textures and details, rather than getting up really, really high in the sky and showing off massive features. So that was plan, explore. And then my third top tip is just learn learn i am still learning i've been flying drones for over five years and every time i put a drone in the air i'm learning something new don't expect to become an expert overnight practice 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 learn watch this video watch all the videos in this series and check out other videos that are out there something i do all the time is i'll go and find another drone pilot whose work i really really like and i'll see some shots that they've captured that are maybe done in a way that i haven't tried before and i'll go and try and replicate that myself but it's really about putting the flight hours in putting the practice in, getting the grips with the drone, getting the grips with the settings, and just putting that all the practice outdoors in the environment. Well, I'm back in Bushmills with my little drone friends here. We are finished this series. Really hope that you've learned a lot in this series of videos. 
just to go over some of those key points again, the importance of researching your drone before you buy it. They are a bit different. There's different restrictions that apply. Research, find out which one is gonna suit you the best. We picked the DJI Mini 2 as what we think is the best uh, beginner drone, but maybe the Air 2S might suit you better. So do that research and find out which one is gonna suit you the best. Once you've got the drone, the importance of learning how to use it inside and out. Read the manual, learn how to fly this thing. Try those basic techniques over and over again, the basic movements before you go crazy. And once you've mastered those techniques, how to pick locations and the time of day and the weather conditions and the way you want to fly and explore each of those places. And finally, once you've captured all of your footage, how to get the most from it with a little bit of editing afterwards. Finally, a massive thank you to DJI for sponsoring this video, and I can't wait to see the kinds of shots and videos, photographs and stills that you're gonna create with your drone. And don't forget when you post them, to tag them with the hashtag WexMasterclass. Thanks for watching.